Yeah, yeah, right. So after I disemboweled him, here's the best part. I dragged his kids out to the backyard and drained them in front of him. It was a pretty wicked Friday night. I, I oh, oh, fuck. Sorry, I'll call you back. Um, fuck. Yeah. Blue, welcome back to Vampire Teching Reviews Bleach. There's a car that just drove by. I don't know if you could have heard that, but yeah. This is kind of a lackluster way to end out these Halloween reviews. Everybody, Vampire Teching here to review Bleach chapter number 649, titled The Theater Suicide, Scene 3. So, chapter continues on where we left off. We had uh, Shunsui activating his Bonkai, Katen Kyokatsu Kuromatsu Shinju, which is uh, broken up into three different uh, dawns or acts, you know, to a play or to a story. Uh, the first act or dawn uh, had the wounds being shared between Lile and Shunsui so that Shunsui's uh, injuries that Lile caused him got reflected onto himself. And then we had an illness one, which caused Lile to begin, like, erupting blood, you know, bleeding from the eyes, have these, like, black spotted legions all over his body. And then the third one uh, was uh, Giango's Abyss, which basically basically cast both Shunsui and Lele into this bottomless void of water. You know, it basically just summoned an ocean all around them. You know, it's basically just fucking logic over. So we begin where we left off there. We have Lele who is submerged under the water and he keeps on uh, sinking. And no matter what he tries, he cannot manage to get back up. Even when he has all these wings and he's trying to propel himself back up to the surface, the surface just keeps getting further away from him. You know, kind of like if he was in a video game that's just glitching the fuck out. Aw, oh, damn it, damn it, damn it. Okay, okay, calm down, Lily. You're the fucking messenger of God, all right? Now, now, what did Yuha tell you to do in a situation like this? Ah, yes, Lule. Well, I just wanted to tell you, on the off chance that Shinigami ever activates their Bonkai, which sends you to the bottom of an unexplainable ocean that just magically manifested around you, I want you to know one thing. Oh, uh, okay, Majesty, what is it? Well, what should I do if these very likely series of events occur? You should make sure to wear a gorget. Um, your majesty, I have no idea what a gorget is. I have spoken! Now, despite the fact that they're both underwater, they can, of course, still speak to each other, because it wouldn't be a Bleach chapter if the character that just showed off that power wouldn't be able to explain that power to the villain. And, uh, also remember, like I said, Shunsui's Bankai logic kind of... Yeah. Though, I have to hand it to Shunsui, he doesn't so much explain the power of his Bonkai or what it's actually doing, he rather just keeps on talking very vaguely about the nature of his Bonkai's power, or really what it means, like, symbolically and shit. So we get the title page, which not only includes Shunsui, but the pretty badass part of this chapter is that it also includes the Zompokto spirit form of Katen Kyokatsu, uh, who is uh, wrapping her arms around Shunsui's uh, back, as was probably that shadowy figure at the end of 647. Remember that? That shadowy figure that appeared. You know, we didn't really get to see what it was, and I could kind of assume, we all kind of assumed that was probably Katen Kyokatsu, but we didn't really want to jump to conclusions on what she would look like, because this is uh, an interesting topic, because we've actually already seen Katen Kyokatsu before in the Zanpakuto arc, which was the non-canon arc in the anime, and uh, she looks pretty much exactly like she did uh, back then. In fact, she looks pretty much identical. I think her eye patch might have a slightly different like chain to it or like different appearance there, but she's pretty much exactly the same exact design. And uh, this brings up some questions. Uh, first things first, I should probably just throw this out there because there are still people that send me messages and they discuss things that happened in the Zompok Toe arc like they're actually canon in the series and I have to address you that it is not, it isn't. Uh, what happened, and this is really all that happened, is that uh, Kubo was part in designing the Zompokto spirits uh, and their appearance, how they would look in human form. You know, that was the only um, thing that Kubo really contributed to that arc. So, it makes sense why Katen Kyokatsu's appearance here is consistent with Katen Kyokatsu in the anime, but that has nothing to do with, you know, Muramasa being canon or the events of that arc taking place at some point. It was just the appearance. That's all it was. Just think of them like alternate universes. Um, 
What was it also? Another thing, yeah. Uh, just to address that arc really quick, because some people were still, like, really confused of exactly how the Zompocto spirits worked, because, you know, we had Renji Zompocto, which took the appearance of Zabimara, which took the appearance of, like, a monkey and a snake, and then we had, in the Zompocto arc, it took the appearance of, like, a hot, busty woman and a little boy that was, like, the, they were chained together. So, here's how this worked, and this is just, like, a minor deviation, but just to, like, you know, cement in how this worked. Muramasa was able to use his powers to pull out a Zompocto spirit and manifest it in a human form. Even the Zompocto spirits that did not have a human form, like Zabimaru or Hyorin Maru, that took the appearance of, like, animals, or, you know, Hyorin Maru was like an ice dragon. Doesn't matter what they looked like in their true form, Muramasa was able to form them into a human guise, sort of. So, there were some Zompocto spirits, like, uh, well, what we thought to be Zongetsu back then, and uh, Katen Kyokatsu that already had a human form, so when they got manifested, they pretty much stayed the same. Uh, but then we had other Zompocto spirits that had to be changed you know, their forms, like, changed forcefully. So that's how that worked. But anyway, yeah, moving on beyond the Zompocto arc, that's the only thing that really, you know, sinks up here is their appearance. Uh, just think of Katen Kyokutsu here as a completely different character that has none of the knowledge that took place in that arc. Um, we have her show up here, and she wraps her arms around uh, Shunsui, and she calls him uh, Sakura Nosuke. And um, this was kind of a confusion, too, exactly who is calling who Sakura Nosuke. It was definitely uh, Katen Kyokutsu, and I'll tell you why, because... Uh, Sakura Nosuke, kind of a girly name for a guy, but that, that suffix, Nosuke, that is definitely a male, it, it's a male's name. It's basically like calling Cherry, it, basically like calling Shunsui like Cherry Blossom Boy, but that's basically it. Um, in addition to that, uh, Shunsui also uh, addresses Katen Kyokatsu as my flower, Ohana. Uh, Ohana, Hana, of course, just means flower, but throwing that O in front of it, in, in Japanese language, you can do this thing called the honorable O, where you can throw an O in front of, uh, of a word, and it makes it sound more respectful. For example, I could say to you, uh, Genki desu ka, which just means, how are you, or how you doing? Uh, but if I add O Genki desu ka to it, it means the exact same thing, it just is a little bit more of a respectful way of saying, you know, how are you, or, you know, how you doing? So, um, that, that is that. They're basically just kind of like having this playful banter back and forth because they have this sort of relationship that we're going to touch upon in a little bit that's a little bit more intimate, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, you know what? Because, the, because Akatsu Kyokatsu shows up here and because he called him Sakura Nosuke and he, they mentioned the kimono, you know what? I got to make a costume change. I'll be right back. It's Halloween. Vampires can dress up too. Oh yeah. Here we go. Ha, <laughs> ha. You know, some days you just feel like a boss. Seriously, go out, go to Amazon, order a kimono, find something that looks like a kimono, and just, just drape it over your shoulders, and you'll find out immediately why Shunsui always has that look. You just, you just feel like such a chill guy, but also a boss at the same time. Now, now I get why, where the fashion comes from. Damn straight. So Shunsui and Katen Kyokatsu have a little bit of a back and forth, basically uh, explaining the fact that they haven't seen each other in a very long time, which would indicate uh, that Shunsui only is able to see Katen Kyokatsu or properly converse with Katen Kyokatsu when he goes into Bankai. And this is going to be strengthened by another line. He, Shunsui pretty much just comes out right and says this at the end of the chapter, that this is like the only time he's able to see her. So I don't know if, it, if like his sword works differently, like he just can't go into his inner world and, you know, go into that gene zen thing and just talk to his spirits like any other Shinigami can. Like there's like a unique relationship with him and his spirit. Uh, Katsun Kyokatsu brings up the fact that his kimono that he's wearing has been, you know, it's seen better days. It's been ripped to shreds a little bit. We see that it's, you know, it's soaked in blood from Lily's attack, and also a little bit of a shadowy aura is coming off of it, too, probably from the effects of his bankai as well. Um, also, it could be because because Lily is unable to see Katsun Kyokatsu. So maybe, like, the shadowy image that we saw, like, over him, the aura, maybe that's, like, how Katen Kyokatsu appears to Lile, because he can't actually see the spirit, and that's, like, what the shadow represents, you know? But, and, and, you know, the, because uh, Shunsui's Bankai's theme is, is shadow-related already, like, maybe you can see the shadow of Katen Kyokatsu, but not the actual figure. Well, anyway, uh, Katsu Kyokatsu brings up an interesting uh, thing of involving the kimono. He, uh, she says, you're always gallivanting around in other women's kimonos. So, I don't know if this is indicating, like, there's another 
woman in, in Shun Sui's life as if there could be more. Okay, let's say we have Nanao, we have Lisa, then we have Katen Kyokatsu. Is, is there another woman going on? I mean, I read a theory that, and this is kind of dark, but I read a theory that Shun Sui once had like a wife and a child and he used Bonkai and they ended up dying, which is a pretty fucked up theory. But hey, given the, what she's saying here, then again, it could just be more playful banter. It could just be like, oh, you're just wearing women's clothes again. You know, that typical thing, I guess, between the two. Yeah, most of this chapter is just honestly just their, their banter back and forth. Doesn't really have much substance other than just give a little bit more insight of all their relationship. Like, it doesn't advance the plot, really. But, I mean, I'm, I'm cool with it. I'm just awesomely dumbstruck at still seeing this girl in the freaking uh, manga. It's freaking badass, man. Lily brings up the fact that he's not able to see Katen Kyokatsu, and therefore, from his perspective, it looks like Shun Sui's just talking to himself. But he says it doesn't matter anyway, because the power of a Bonkai is so pathetic that it could never hope to defeat someone like him. A judgment, a, a, a messenger of God, you know, and he even says, like, you know, it doesn't matter how much damage you do to me, it's just a pitiful technique. I can never die to something like this. So he ramps up to come charging to Shun Sui. I don't know if he's going to try out a new technique or whatever, but Shun Sui goes down. He reaches for both of his swords. Uh, however, he doesn't pull them out. He just kind of reaches down for his katanas, pulls his hands back, and now his hands seem to have like this white uh, filament or thread surrounding him, and he just begins to recite this verse. He says, but a woman's compassion can be just as cruel, no longer leaving an ear open to the man she adores. Now around her throat shines but a damp white thread of lingering affection. At the very least, allow me to cast it off with my own hands, this unslightly entangled thread of lingering passion. Now I present to you the grand finale, if you will, the final die. Thread-cutting shears, blood-stained windpipe. Hmm. Very poetic way of saying, it's a fucking razor wire! Huh. Well, uh, doesn't seem like he did any damage there. Well, I guess I should just counterattack before he manages to... Oh, uh, okay, uh, looks like a little minor paper cut. Uh, shouldn't be anything I should be worried about. All I have to do is... <laughs> Shit. Okay, let me rephrase that. It was a fucking godly razor wire. Yeah, so the final technique of the final dawn of Shunsui's Bankai pretty much just has this extended filament or wire that he just extends out, wraps around his opponent, and basically subsequently, like, rips apart and explodes anything that fucking thing comes in contact with because Lile's throat gets, like, slit, and then it literally just, like, all of his organs, everything in his body just immediately tries to leave through that one opening, and it just gushes outward, you know? And I, 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 I kind of want to draw something there on this just blank white bubble that's erupting from Lily's throat. I, I don't know what to do, though. I mean, okay, maybe... Okay, it's kind of shaped like one of the ghosts from, like, Mario Brothers. Maybe I'll just... Yeah, there we go. I mean, that's something. Maybe you guys can give me some other ideas. He kind of looks like a frog, you know, with it's, like, erupting from him. Yeah, okay, but whatever. Uh, with that attack, though, it looks like uh, Lily's entire upper half has been completely obliterated and his remainder of his body just falls down into a, a bottomless abyss between the buildings. Not really sure if they're, like, warping dimensions here where Lily's just going to keep falling forever because we just see, like, a black abyss. We don't see the bottom, so I don't know how the logic of this place works, but whatever, however. On the bright side, though, I think I finally figured out what a Gorgit was. Now, here's the interesting part. After he apparently has completed his Bankai, Shun Sui just kind of, like, lets out a sigh, and then he begins to fall backwards as if he's, you know, exhausted himself, and he's about to collapse, you know? Even though nothing that really seemed to happen really affected him all that much. I mean, I mean, the initial damage from Lily, sure, but nothing involving his Bankai seemed to, like, you know, tire him out considerably or really, you know, put a lot of strain on his body, but he just begins to now collapse. He falls backwards right into Katen Kyokatsu's lap, to which he's quite pleased by, because, well, let's be honest here, who wouldn't be? Um, and he states that, I guess the occasional Bankai has its fringe benefits because I'm able to rest on your lap. So that basically implies, yeah, the only time he's able to see her or converse with her is when he goes into Bankai. And this goes on a little bit more where they kind of have a little bit more of a of a, of a back and forth, basically hinting on some sort of romantic relationship between the two. To which point she even says, I don't know why you would have chosen to be with me anyways. Katanas and Shinigami are such incompatible beings. But I digress. You're free to do as you please. 
Is Shun Sui fucking that sword? I think Shun Sui's fucking that sword. Now, before you guys get all uppity and be like, oh, Tacky, you know, there's more to a relationship than just sex, you know? It could just be a romantic relationship between different beings. It's, it's such, it's so elegant, it's so symbolic, yeah. Well, I would buy that, except for the fact that about 100 chapters ago, we had this guy who basically had an entire fucking harem of Zompok Toe Spirits chilling out in his backyard. So, you know, I don't want to hear it, okay? Shun Sui bang the sword, okay? In fact, it's actually even more funny when you consider another revelation we found out about Zong Pao spirits in that they're not actually separate entities. They're more like versions of your soul that kind of just split off and become weapons and they're just basically yourself. So I guess that means that Shun Sui um, is in love with himself. Y yeah, yeah, okay. I could buy that. that. That's totally believable. Yeah, sure, totally. Well, at the very least, though, it seems that everything's good. Uh, the battle's finished. Lily got blown into a thousand pieces. We got to see Shun Sui's Bankai. We got to see Katen Kyokatsu in the manga. And now Shun Sui is just taking a nice rest on his lover's lap right before... I thought I told you already. I am a messenger of God. Yuha gave me the letter X. I am Lily Barrow. The perforator of all creation. Do not make me repeat myself. A lowly Shinigami's bonkai is impotent in the face of a true prophet. Oh my god! You mean to tell me they thought the fight was over, but then all of a sudden a big attack came out of nowhere, critically injuring the main hero of the fight? That was totally unexpected! Alright, well, um... Yeah, so Lilia's not dead. I mean, it kind of goes by my prediction. I didn't think the fight was going to end this chapter, so that kind of a win for me there. Um, you know, but I was more of along the lines of uh, debunking on symbolism much foreshadowing maybe i don't know but yeah i was uh, expecting lilia to do some technique to kind of like dispel the ocean and then maybe soon we had to think of another idea but you know the whole idea of lily apparently being defeated and then coming back up out of nowhere i mean that's so that that's so cliche in bleach though i didn't think kubo was going to do that i mean I, I can understand him doing it to fucking mayori and, and toshiro and, and soy phone and, and ichigo a couple times and 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 even uh, that one time with Yoroichi, but you know, I, I didn't expect it with Shunsui, I mean, he's fucking Shunsui, but yeah, um, so that happened, now, there's another thing going on here that might call back something to the Zanpakuto arc, and that was the idea that in that arc, Shunsui's, uh, sword took the form of not one spirit, but two, it took the form of sexy lady here, and also this little girl that had the eye patch that, Everyone likes way more, and I know how they like her more because if you try to look for images of Zanpakuto, of Katen Kyokatsu's spirit on the internet, you will find about 80% of this girl and 20% of this girl. That's just how it goes. Um, which I'll admit, she's pretty cool. In fact, I went to a con last April and I saw somebody that was cosplaying as her. Fucking amazing cosplay. Isn't this badass? Is this not bad space ass? She had the sword and it. Oh man, it was awesome. Anyway, um... But yeah, so I don't know if that's that that character is going to come into play next chapter. I would assume it would because if Kubo's going to take, you know, a reference from uh if, if he's going to use the design from that arc for that, I wouldn't imagine he wouldn't use the other design he had. But yeah. Um next time though, um I I, I don't want to say Shunsui's going to straight up die, but whatever technique Lily's Lily's going to use here probably going to critically injure him, because like I said, we didn't get really any injuries for Shunsui here. We don't even really know if he was dying. I mean, we can kind of go off the name of his Zanpakuto and how he kept saying that, you know, he was going to, you know, not being able to make it out of this, so we could assume that he was about to die in the lap of Katsu and Kyokatsu, but we really don't know that, but next chapter is probably going to be Lily's going to reforge himself, explain how his power is so fucking badass for about three pages, and then attack Shunsui, critically injure him, and then he's going to do something else with Katsu and Kyokatsu. Maybe Katsu and Kyokatsu is going to fight for him, use some other technique that only she can use, and then that's going to finish, you know, Lilia off, and the fate of Shunsui will be left ambiguous. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to say he's going to die. I really don't. I really don't want to see him die, but you know how that goes. Also, I mean, we were all kind of wrong on the Nanao thing. I mean, Nanao's still probably going to play a place in it, but we were all assuming, like, oh, hey, Nanao, she must be the lover that was being referenced in the um, in, in the lover's suicide, twin suicide sort of deal. But no, it was Katen Kyokatsu all along, but hey, that makes sense, too. Um, and I guess it would be a twin suicide suicide because if you know shouldn't we die you know so we cut and kill cut but anyway yeah uh that's bleach chapter review hope you guys enjoyed as you can tell my voice is beginning to crap out now so i'm gonna get going but anyway thanks for watching signing out